Hey, what is up, Run Fam? It's uh, been a while. Um, we'll call it because of the COVID. Uh, but uh, just, I don't know. I just haven't had time, I guess, lately. And this is a video that I've been thinking about for a while. And I kind of, uh, I hated to make it at first, but it, it kind of validates the channel uh, a little bit, or at least what I'm doing. Because yeah, by nature, I'm an encouraging person. But uh, the, the Under Armour Infinite 2 shoe that I have been running in, uh, the last video I made at the end of it, I had made some comments about how my Achilles had been bothering me. Uh, the next run or two after that, it got to the point where I had to stop because it felt like it was just going to tear in two. Um, and I didn't want to blame the shoes. I didn't want to blame these shoes at first, but, uh, I did some, I did some looking, some research, uh, on what, what could cause that kind of pain. And if there was something impinging, on the Achilles, it would actually cause that pain. So uh, I still didn't want to blame the shoe for it necessarily. So I went back to running in the Brooks uh, Ghost 12 just to see if the pain went away. It did subside some, but it was still kind of there and underlined. And I took basically the month of June off for at least about three weeks of running. I just, I just could not run because uh, of how much pain I was in. And I, I did a test at the track after I'd been running in the Brooks for a little, after I went back to the Brooks. And I ran, I warmed up in the Brooks. I went back up and I put the Under Armour Infinite 2 back on. And I started running. I got maybe a half mile, three quarters of a mile into the run on the track. And I noticed that uh, my left Achilles, and I had posted some some stuff on Twitter, uh, a picture of it. But right, right where it was hurting uh, before, there was a red mark uh, that was being left from the shoe where the shoe, where, where the back uh, heel part was hitting it. And if you look at some shoes that are coming out this year in 2020, um, I think the New Balance 1080, the the Hoka uh, Clifton 7 had, had kind of made some of these changes where they had flared out this this back heel part. And uh, some shoes had like the, the the piece on where you could where you could just pull the heel up. Uh, the name escapes me right now, but uh, pull tab. Yeah, how about that? Right where they have the the little tab on the back, so you, so you could pull it up or pull it pull it on tight, and they've kind of gone away from that and just kind of flared the back way out. And at first, I was like, "Boy, I don't like that at all. I don't like the look of it. I don't think it would feel good." But after figuring out that what was causing my problem was, uh, you know, just just the way that this is kind of made. This is it's, it's very tight back here. It's very rigid, and this this foam back here is. Uh, very dense, very, very hard, uh, underneath. Uh, and it, it, it took a while. I, I don't know if you, if you're very determined to get this shoe in the shoe, like the running part of the shoe, the energy return of the shoe, the, the outsole, the wear of the shoe is great. But, uh, you know, I, I would strongly suggest, you know, trying the shoe on first. Um, and, and the shoe felt a little snug to me at first. It took probably 20, 25 miles just to get it kind of what I'll call broke in. But even, even after that, the shoe may not have been actually broken in. Uh, you know, it just may have been too tight. And this, this upper on the top is very restrictive. Uh, the, the Brooks shoe that I have, there's a lot of give in that upper. And it makes a huge difference. It really does. So I think, you know, that, that rigidity here and, and where it comes, you know, across the whole upper and how stiff this back is with this, you know, the way they did the, the heel support back here, the heel cup, and this is, this is hard even right here. Like there, there's very little give in the back of the shoe. And I'm not saying necessarily that's a good thing, but for me, apparently, like I'm going to have to be very conscientious of this because I'm an older person. Um, I say older, I'm, I mean, I'm in my forties, but you know, I don't want to take three weeks off every so often because of, because of heel pain or because of something else. You know, my, my downfall is I'm incredibly cheap. So, I you know, and I've tried to get back into the shoe. I've tried loosening up the laces, uh, you know, across the middle to, to make it, um, you know, less restrictive, I guess, uh, you know, to, to maybe have some give there so that, it, but I don't like my feet sliding around in a shoe. Uh, I, I just, feel like it's going to create a blister or, or something else. You know, I like the shoe to be fairly tight on my feet. And, and this one, you know, if you really lock it down, 
uh, you know, it just causes a tremendous amount of pain. I don't know if it's just where the shoe is at now. You know, I would say, well, I would try to wear it again. I would try to run it again. But every time I've tried, even just uh, walking around in the shoe, I can make it probably about three miles walking. And it's just, you know, I can, I can feel it in the back. And I've tried loosening the laces to the point where they're almost, you know, they're not tied. They're just kind of, kind of just hanging out. And it's, it's such a weird shoe because this is so tight. It almost feels like, like it's really tight around the toes. If you do something like that, it's, it's very odd. So, uh, here comes my dog. She, tip tap, tip tap. She was fine like 10 seconds ago. And here comes the other dog. So, uh, tap dancing party here, but, uh, I will not be tap dancing anymore in, in these shoes. And it's unfortunate because I only had 120, 125 miles in the shoe actually running. Like I, I, I did nothing but run in the shoe. I didn't walk in the shoe. I didn't wear the shoe around hardly. And it's uh, just so unfortunate because I feel like I really didn't get the wear that I need out of the shoe. But if you're, if you're looking at this shoe, if you really want this shoe, I would highly suggest trying another a half size up uh, from what you normally wear. I think if I did that, maybe I wouldn't have the issues uh, because you could really tighten down across the top. Like you, and the foot's not gonna slip with the upper up here either. Um, uh, you know, just a thought, uh, other than that, I would skip the shoe entirely. Uh, you know, it's just, it's really not worth, you know, for me, uh, to, to shut down for, for a month at a time. Uh, you know, not that I'm a, a hardcore runner, but you know, I, I like to run, I like to train and not being able to do that. It, it kind of sucks, you know, especially if you feel like you're not doing anything at all. And it's just because, if you go to do it, you're going to be an incredible amount of pain. And that's, that's not a good feeling. You know, people run every day. You should be able to run every day. You shouldn't be in pain. If you're, if you're in pain, there's, there's something wrong. And for me, you know, at least it was an obvious problem. You know, it took me a while to get there, but, oh, hey, this is, this is an easy fix. You know, I just won't wear the shoe anymore to run in. Uh, I'm probably going to have to wear it, you know, maybe to walk to, you know, just to maybe to work, uh, work around the house for, for brief periods. But uh, wearing the shoe out, wearing it for a long time, if I was going to do that, I, I think it would cause me problems. So I'm going to have to really pick my spots to just to just get the wear out of the shoe that I need to, to make it feel like it's worth it. I, I did save some money because I had the Under Armour coupon, thanks to the Map My Run app. Like, I think Under Armour's doing some nice things, like putting the chip in the shoe, giving you the feedback of the coaching on the Map My Run app, uh, tracking your cadence, your stride length. Oh, uh, that, you know, that's some really neat stuff. It's just the fit of the shoe needs some work now. That's, that's where they, they need to dial in this upper and the support system in the back. And for a neutral shoe, there, there is not much give in this shoe. You know, this is almost like a, a stability type shoe, the way that it feels. So that's, that's going to be my final take on the Under Armour Infinite 2. You know, I, I ended up spending like 80 some dollars on the shoe. I've got a hundred and 20 some miles in it, uh, actually running and a little bit of walking, but, uh, that's not, that's not a tremendous value, um, for me right now. And it's, it's going to be a struggle to, to get the money out. Like I said, if you really, you know, hell bent on getting the shoe, then I, I would try half size up. I would try the shoe on in a store first, which is the other problem with Under Armour because they're not putting the shoe in the outlets. You can't find the shoe in any of the stores, uh, to, to actually try on running stores are not carrying the shoe. So it's just kind of like order online. If you, if you get like your normal size, you try it on and it, it feels, you know, kind of tight, maybe a little bit cramped, send it back, just, just send it back. And it, cause it is not worth the fight. And it, it shut me down. I don't know if you have the same problem. Like I said, I'm, I am newer, a newish runner, but to me, it's just, it's not worth it at all. So that's all I got for today. Um, for me, this is going to be a hard pass unless they redesign it. I'm not saying I wouldn't try another Under Armour shoe because I like, I like the technology. I like what they did. The energy return when running this shoe is great, but this particular shoe, the way it's built, I, I would definitely, it's going to, I'm going to try it on and it's going to fit well before I try to run in it. I'll tell you that. All right. That's all I've got. Take care of yourself and be COVID free as much as you can. All right. Later.